Welcome. Welcome. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous to share this with you. So thank you for your support. Thank you for um, still believing in me and uh, having faith in me. But I, I did get caught and I need to share publicly. I think it's the best way to help uh, everybody get their questions answered. Feel free to comment, um, ask questions. I'll do my best to respond and answer to them um, with still sharing what needs to be shared. Okay, so a few years ago, um, let's see, it probably started maybe almost, a, almost 10 years ago. So um, I had this experience and uh, ever since I had this experience, I haven't, I wasn't able to get it out of my mind, wasn't able to, I didn't know what to do about it. So I had this experience, I'm like, oh geez, if anybody finds out, they're gonna, they're gonna treat me differently. And I didn't want that, obviously, not like anybody wants that. Nobody wants to share their, their deepest, darkest secrets, you know, with, with the world. And so uh, I chose not to for a long time. Uh, I went about my business uh, doing my best to kind of conceal it or, or to not let people know. And then gradually what started to happen is I start to see other people who it seemed that they had... Uh, a similar experience to me and I started to get a little bit more courageous that maybe I could actually share this and I wouldn't be judged, I wouldn't be ridiculed, that people would accept Samuel uh, for who he is, for all of his um, wonderful traits and for all of his imperfections, right, and be able to see Samuel for who he is and accept him for who he is. And that um, that's honestly like I think most people's fear is they're worried about being accepted and um, what, what I found is that sometimes acceptance doesn't come right now, sometimes it doesn't come in this lifetime and we just have to be willing to move on, but there's only so much you can do um, to hide something or conceal something until you get caught. And once you get caught, it just, th there's no more hiding it anymore. And that's, uh, it's a terrifying experience. It's also very liberating to know, you know, the secret's out. There's, there's nothing, um, nothing left to hide. Um, we can have an honest conversation whenever somebody's interested in, in having that. Um, and what, what's really fascinating is uh, as I start to see um, this happen more in, in somebody, like in, in people's lives, they were being more exposed. Well, also what happened is as I started to look back in history, um, then I started to see that other people in history had had the same issues that I had. And so that also gave me hope. I was able to read a lot of biographies, a lot of autobiographies, a lot of stories about people who had dealt with the same issue that I had, um, listen to a lot of podcasts, and find out how did they really break the news to the world? What's the best strategy? Um, because again, we all want to be accepted. We all want to be included into an environment. And at some point, we have to choose what's more important. Is being accepted more important than being truthful, being honest, being vulnerable? And for a lot of people, it is, unfortunately. There's so many people out there who live, um, they're, they're lying to themselves, they think that they're hiding things from people that they're not, they're lying to other people, and they have to live with that. And it's just so sad to see that happen um, because it destroys their, their inner integrity. Uh, my, my mom, um, I love my mom <laughs> and my dad, uh, and one thing that they always taught me was to have integrity. Um, in fact, it's one of my highest level core values and the reality is no matter how much it's a core value, how much you focus on being uh, in living in integrity, there's always going to be a level of being out of integrity. Um, and so coming clean is part of that, that process. Um, and in fact, <laughs> uh, one of the first steps to the 12 step program is to recognize that uh, you're, you, can't, you can't resist it. Like You need somebody else's help, you need support if you actually want to be able to move past um, the situation you're in. So as I was discovering this and um, kind of going through these things, it all kind of came to a head when I uh, finally got caught. And when you get caught, there's nothing you can do. Like It's like you're getting caught with your, your, cookie, your hand in the cookie jar and you just finally have to accept it. So. Um, the, the interesting thing is uh, w when you have an affair, um, what, what exactly is involved in having an affair, right? There's so many different types of affairs. 
Um, there's a book, great book called His Needs, Her Needs, and it's all about how to avoid divorce, uh, having an affair-proof marriage. Um, and the word affair has so many different connotations to it. Um, I, I understand why I'm using that word, um, but it's, it's so crucial to understand. Um, the thing about an affair is that it's secretive. We're scared of people finding out. And uh, we actually believe that uh, it's, it's more of the excitement uh, of doing it without getting caught that, that's exciting about an affair. And um, often involves somebody else, but it doesn't always have to involve somebody else. Uh, it can involve many different aspects of life. And so as I, I didn't even know I was having an affair. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you don't even recognize you're having an affair and then all of a sudden you get caught and you're like, oh crap. <laughs> I should have known, you know, I should have known. Um, and, and you might think, no, there's no way that you're that dumb, Sam. Um, just ask anybody who knows me, I'm pretty much that dumb. Um, so I get caught having this in an affair and I'm wondering, well, how do I how do I deal with this now, right? What if the secret gets out? How, how many people are gonna find out about me having an affair? I shouldn't be laughing, but um, sometimes that's how you deal with stressful situations is through humor. Um, and so then, so then I'm stuck, right? I have, I have to come clean. And uh, so just, just bear with me here in this story. But the, the first step is trying to justify why you're doing it and trying to explain to people the situation that you were in and, and why it's okay that you're doing this. Um, and before you do that, <laughs> uh, it's important to recognize that you listen to this whole message. Because if you miss, if you just listen to the, half, the first half of this message, you will be so lost and um, so so wait till the story finishes but what I found was that um, I had a dream okay I had a dream that I wanted to provide for my family um, all by myself I didn't want to have my income reliant on somebody else I wanted to become self-sufficient and proficient and know that the value that I was adding to the world um, was complete now sometimes you get that that fulfillment and that recognition and uh, you're able to achieve that through through certain relationships and sometimes not um, and so the first thing I had to become honest with was myself and recognize that hey this is real there's no putting it to sleep there's no um, pretending it didn't happen um, I, I've, I've, I have to live true to myself and you probably heard that before and think oh man that guy's such a, a dirty person right well the reality is, um, this happened when I was doing summer sales. I finally, it clicked for me that there's no way that you could pay me enough to work for you. Um, my dream was too big. My, my mission was too large to um, continue to work for someone. But the, the reality is I continued to, to work for someone else. So um, this affair that I was having, it wasn't necessarily a sexual affair or a relationship affair per se, it was that I was continually showing up at work, working for somebody else when my whole entire heart, my whole soul was not committed to that relationship. It was not committed to being an employee and working for somebody else. Every waking moment, it was like this obsession, this, this addiction to go and find my own way, make my own way in the world and provide for my own family without anybody else's um, dictating to me what I'm worth. And um, that was scary because I have family members who um, don't necessarily completely agree with the entrepreneur lifestyle. They don't necessarily agree with um, the, the risk, right? They, they love the stability of a job, okay? They love the stability of selling themselves to the highest bidder because they can always count on getting income, right? And although for some people that's okay and I'm not... Uh, I'm not slamming anybody for you choosing the way of life that you choose, but for me, I just knew it was, I couldn't do it anymore. I knew that I couldn't do this, and it was, it was one of the things that when I started looking for a spouse, when I was looking for who I was going to marry, um, I, I had to discuss it. I couldn't hide it from my spouse. I couldn't hide it from Charlie, um, knowing that there's no way on this planet that I'm ever going to work for somebody else. And... There, there's a many people who that's all they've experienced is growing up where their parents had a job, it was a good secure job and that's all they experienced and it couldn't be me, that that wasn't gonna be me. And, and so I had to figure out um, how to have that conversation, how to, how to explain to your potential spouse that um, you've been having this affair, right? You've been, you've been going to work 
and you're totally unfulfilled, you hate your job, you hate your life, you just want to be able to support yourself, um, and how do you break free from that? Now, the cool thing about um, this is when you find the right person, when you find the right woman um, or spouse, uh, if, you're, if you're a female, when you find the right person, they actually support you in your affair. They actually say, hey, let's go have this affair together. Let's run off into the woods, um, into the big bad world out there, and let's become an entrepreneur. Let's build a world-class company where we're able to serve and bless people's lives. But let's, I want, I want to be even more specific about what was my affair. Like, what exactly am I obsessed with? What is such a sexy opinion what, or belief or mission or crusade that I couldn't get it out of my mind, that there's no stopping me from accomplish, accomplishing this? It doesn't matter how many AA programs I go to or 12-step programs, you are not going to be able to remove this desire out of Samuel Knickerbocker. And I'm totally okay with that. In fact, um, daily, I tell myself that it's a good thing because it's, it's easier to tell myself it's a good thing than try and change. Um, maybe you've had that same experience where you, you keep telling yourself something just because it's easier, right? Well, for me, that's how it is. I grew up in a position where um, finances was always a struggle in my family. 11 children, my, when I was born or, or shortly after, my parents were pizza drivers. There was just never enough money to really go around. And yet, I mean, there was enough for us to survive, but we were on government assistance, church assistance. We were doing anything we can to survive um, and, and just live a basic lifestyle. And for me, uh, along with poverty came, um, and, and this is not to throw shade on anybody, keep in mind, I love everybody in my life and I completely honor and respect their portion and, and what, who they are in my life, but it came with abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse. It came to, um, it's probably on everybody's end, Jeffrey, I'm so sorry. Um, watch the replay and it'll be better audio. Um, or you can go to my group, uh, Fuel Your Legacy Leadership group, and uh, there'll be an uploaded video there. But um, po point being, um, it, poverty comes with abuse. It comes with um, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. I mean, it comes with so many social issues that um, we end up going to therapy for after. And I, myself, I went to therapy for years trying to figure out, hey, what, what was wrong with me? Why, why is this, this affair that I've been having, why is it so wrong? Why is it so bad? And how can I overcome it? And maybe if I just go to enough therapy, I'll eventually um, become normal like everybody else. And the reality is it just wasn't happening for me. Um, and, and I finally had to accept that I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to go build a, a business and a mission serving others and a crusade. And it's bigger than me. I can't do it alone. This is a, this is a wonderful thing about affairs. Um, we, need, we need more than a threesome. We need, like, we need a whole orgy of people who are um, willing to go out and sacrifice the security of, of their own job or their own, uh, their own work system to go and, and believe in themselves and, and be on a mission and a crusade to bless people's lives. Like, we can't do this alone. Nobody can do it alone. We need more people. And so what I, what I found was that uh, through going through lots of college and therapy, I found that the study of psychology, neuropsychology, these things, they were incredible, incredible fields of science and I think everybody should learn about them, but ultimately they were for repairing things and I wanted to impact people and, and help them become better on the front side of, of their issues. And in the research I found that teaching somebody how money works um, is, is for me, going to be the most effective way for me to live the life that I want, uh, completely indulge in the affair that I'm having, and also um, bring my family along with me, as weird as that sounds, and, and really live the life that I want to live. And to impact that group of people, people who are suffering from domestic violence, um, divorce, anxiety, depression, suicide, all of these social issues, when you're able to give them confidence and, and help them understand that they have value and money doesn't dictate them and that they can control how money's used, that completely um, transformed my life. That completely helped me understand um, what I needed to do. And now I'm on a mission and on a crusade to, to do that. And I believe that that's the first step of of building a legacy and finding your identity is really identifying inside of yourself what is such a sexy idea, what's such a sexy opinion or crusade that 
You can't get it out of your mind. Once you identify what that is for you, what is so flipping sexy that you cannot remove it from your mind, just like that affair where you, you can't pretend you didn't do it and you're hiding it and you're completely consumed and, and obsessed with it, um, just like that, what, what is going on in your life? What could you produce? What value could you bring to the world that you're that obsessed about? And once you find that thing, I'm, I'm nearly confident that you're going to find out that you can't complete it all by yourself. You need other people's help. You need to interact. You need to, to share that light and that vision and, and that, that crusade with other people. You can't do it alone. And that's what we're going to be talking about um, in the Fuel Your Legacy Leadership Group. We're going to go over the, the smart way to build a legacy and the S stands for sexy, man. Your legacy, your dream, your crusade, it's got to be so sexy that when somebody hears it, they can't help but to watch the rest of the video. They can't help but to join you and find out how can they participate in saving people from anxiety, depression, suicide, right? Domestic violence, divorce. How can they save families? How can they save children? Right? That is the mission that I'm on and the crusade that I'm on. And I understand that it's not going to be for everybody, but for the people that connect with that mission, man, just, just know, and it may not be right now, but just know that there's a tribe out there. There's people out there who are on the same mission. And, and the more that you can think about it, the more you obsess about it, the more you um, start looking in the past and in the future and the people around you, there's tons of other people who are struggling with how to accomplish that the best way, and there's a lively discussion happening. Um, and so um, feel free to, to comment and, and engage with this. And really, if, you, if you're brave, if you're brave, um, then you're going to actually put on here what your affair is, what affair you're having in life right now. Um, and, and guess what, guys? I'm here to support you in completely and fully indulging in all righteous um, affairs that you're having. Everything that's giving you greater self-confidence, enjoyment, fulfillment, um, greater family time, life, lifestyle, everything that is an affair that's to that end, I'm fully on board and I will support you. I'll back you and anybody who's trying to tear you down on social media or otherwise, I will back you 100% because I know the value of a support system. I know the value of a committed spouse who's willing to stand by you no matter what anybody else, family members, friends, anybody who's going to choose to exit your life because they can't handle you having this affair because it somehow misses, misplaces them in, in their life. Anybody like that, I'm, I'm there to support you. I'm there to stand with you and let you know that you can accomplish it and you can live your dream and, and you can be remembered for doing something good in this life and, and really, really sacrificing um, some of your time and your soul to, to bless the lives of others. I want to help you accomplish that. So if there's anything I can do, please comment. Please come over and join the, the Le Fuel Your Legacy Leadership Group uh, where we're going to be discussing ways that we can all fully indulge in this affair uh, of building our legacy and more importantly, building your meaningful legacy. Because that's what's most important is building your meaningful legacy. We're all different. We all have a unique legacy to li leave. And I want to help you start living that legacy today and not have to wait to experience that in the future. So, love you guys, and uh, thanks for bearing with me. I know it's not always easy to hear um, that somebody may or may not be who you think they are, um, and, and I'm by no means perfect. I mean, I'm fully aware of that, but um, despite all my imperfections, it's not gonna stop me from completely indulging in my affair daily. So, have a great day, and uh, this was part one of the Smart Legacy uh, building section. Um, next one is going to be talking about the M. So wait for the big reveal there about what M represents in the SMART legacy goals. And we'll talk to you soon.